Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. I am super excited about this episode because I'll show you some really cool gadgets I bought for my car to give it a fresh boost of life and make driving a lot more fun. I know many of you have probably asked yourselves whether these kinds of accessories are actually worth the money or if they're just hype. So stick around until the end because I'll test them out and see if they really deliver. In this box we have the Racechip GTS-5, a plug and play performance tuning module that connects directly to your car's engine sensors. It optimizes fuel injection and boost pressure to unlock more horsepower and torque without permanently modifying the engine. Basically it gives your car extra power, better throttle response and in many cases even improved fuel efficiency, all while being easy to install and remove whenever you want. One of the things you'll find inside is the wiring harness. This is where you connect the main module and there are just four electrical plugs that are easy to connect. I'll show you where each of them goes during the installation. This is the main module. You can switch driving modes directly using this module or use the app on your phone if you pay extra for that option. This is the QR code that you need to scan in order to download the installation manuals for each product you order. So I'll scan the QR code and this takes me directly to the download center of Racechip. Then you just download the manual and start studying. But don't worry, installing the device as you will see later on is super simple. And in the last box you have some zip ties and some plastic mounting brackets with a cool Racechip logo on them. Let's move on to the next gadget. The Racechip XLR5 optimizes throttle response, letting you adjust how quickly your car reacts to accelerator input from smooth and economical to sharp and sporty. Both the GTS5 and XLR5 are developed and manufactured in Germany. From what I could read, Racechip was founded in 2008, so they've been producing these accessories for a long time and all the online reviews I could find about this company were positive. Inside this box you'll find the controller and the module. The controller is however optional, so you will have to pay extra for it. It does look really cool, but I can't power it on now because the battery is drained. I will first have to charge it using a simple USB-C phone charger. This is obviously the main module. And at the other end of the wiring harness there are just two electrical connectors. This box also contains all sorts of mounting accessories. I don't want to make this video too long, so for more information visit Racechip's website. You'll find all you need to know in the How it works section. This was the unboxing part, let's move on to the installation. So I drive a Mercedes C250, on paper it has 204 horsepower, which sounds pretty good, right? But somehow it never feels like quite enough. So for my birthday I decided to treat myself and buy not just one but both modules to fix that little problem. So this is the engine compartment of my car. According to the instruction manual we will first have to connect the GTS-5 module wiring harness to the boost pressure sensor. The manual also includes real photos with the location of the sensors of interest so it was really easy to find the boost pressure sensor right over here. I will be using a pick tool so I don't cover the area of interest with my fingers while filming. You just have to pull out this grey locking clip and then pull out the electrical plug while pressing the tab and that was it, the original male connector is out. Then I'll grab the part of the harness marked A, look for the female connector and then insert the original male plug into the female connector on the harness. You can reinsert the grey locking clip now. Then you just insert the remaining male connector into the sensor and you're done here. Just make sure you push them all the way in. For the manifold absolute pressure sensor for this car you will have to take off the cover of the air filter housing using a T20 bit. It is held in place by three screws. Then I'm going to loosen this metal collar clamp on the intake duct. Now I'm going to twist and pull the cover until the duct comes off. 
Let's place this aside for now. And this is the wiring going to the sensor. It is however a hard to reach area, so I'll have to unclip the ECU from the air filter housing and place it aside. This is one of the two metal clips holding the ECU, so I'm just going to release it. So that's one. And there is a second one in the back. I will temporarily place the ECU aside. Now I can pull up the plastic housing just enough to reach the connector. As you can see it is identical to the one from the boost sensor, so we will follow the same steps. I'll first pull out the grey locking clip, then press the clip and pull out the connector. This is where I will need the part of the harness marked with B. And again original male connector to female on B harness. Male connector on the B harness into the sensor socket. All steps in reverse order to place everything back. Time to connect the main module and see if everything works. Just remember to take a photo of the serial number to connect the device to the app. It is up to each of you to decide where to mount the module. I haven't decided yet, but it will probably sit somewhere over here. I turned on the ignition and the module works. This is how you manually select the driving modes. Of course, if you also bought the smartphone app feature, you can use your phone directly to control the module remotely via Bluetooth. So we got 3 for Echo, 5 for Sport, and 7 for Race. Let's now connect the XLR5 to the throttle pedal. You'll just need a 14mm socket to remove the two bolts holding the pedal. And now you have access to the pedals connector. Same locking system here. And it's out. I got the XLR module out of the box. I'm going to connect the female connector marked with B to the original male connector. And then insert the male connector marked A into the pedal socket. And that was all for the XLR. I think the best place to hide the module is behind the carpet for now. After a short test drive I'll fix everything in place with the provided zip ties and brackets. I easily managed to connect the XLR to the smartphone app and to the small controller so it's time to test these babies. Ok guys. I've just uh, deactivated traction control because I really want to feel this thing more naturally. So let's uh, do a full stop. Let's see. say these things this things really work that was crazy now I don't know if the, if it's just the XLR5 or uh, just the GTS5 but together the combination of these two uh, is just it's gonna change your car it's gonna be a totally different car probably if you buy just one of them it's not gonna be the same sensation it's not gonna be that wild but the combination of these two is really noticeable you it, it's impossible not to feel the extra power i mean i've uh, i've viewed a lot of uh, online reviews uh, video reviews on youtube and some users just say they didn't feel the extra horsepower or the extra torque and uh, i don't know how that is possible but maybe they just bought one of the modules and that's why they can't really feel it to the maximum but if you buy both of them it's it's a totally different experience. Okay guys.
guys so uh, the test drive is over because I don't want to destroy my tires or overheat the engine and uh, I'm heading back home I had a lot of fun uh, these two products really transform my car and uh, if anyone else says uh, they don't work then they never really actually try them uh, this is my honest review you do your own research and uh, only you can decide if it's worth the investment for you uh, hope you guys liked the video if you did don't forget to share uh, to other friends uh, don't forget to comment like and uh, subscribe to my channel uh, it's totally free